Hello everyone, Jopke here from the Netherlands with the Pick a Stick Challenge for January 2017. I know I still have quite a few to do for 2016, but well, this isn't a contest, so you can uh, pick whatever challenge you feel like doing and uh, do it in, in your own pace and uh, in any way you like to. Um, as I said before, I find these challenges quite intimidating, but in the short time I am doing this, I learned that with these challenges, improvising is quite important because, well, you do want to have a nice page uh, at the end, right? So what I do is improvise and um, if there is nothing in here that speaks of a background or paint or anything, I will create that between these steps uh, or maybe uh, you could start with a piece of paper that has already some paint on it that you used maybe to pick up some leftover paint. Um, this is a piece of watercolored paper which I have gessoed before uh, and this is what I am going to use. And I thought, well, this video might be a bit longer than you uh, than I usually do because most of the times I will speed things up and do a voiceover but as I would like to tell you about how I improvise uh, with these steps I thought to um, do a real-time video maybe some parts of it will be sped up, uh, speed up and uh, with a voiceover but I will uh, occasionally come back to you to talk to you directly. Um, I noticed uh, with this new challenges for 2017 there is a wild card stick and I just noticed that so I'm not sure what this means um, if it's optional or is it a step you really have to do I'm not sure. I will try and incorporate that with my page, um, but I will need to think about that as we go along. So, as you can see, I already marked a few because I did start again. I already started uh, and uh, I made a mess out of it, so I decided to start over again. Um, the first step, add a photo. Well, that's not all that difficult, of course, although often a photo is used in the middle of the process or in the end. So that's a bit of a tricky one. Uh, what this basically means is that you have to work around your photo, I guess. So uh, I picked out a few things. I have kind of an idea where I'm going with this page. As I said, I've just showed this uh, a watercolor piece of paper which is A4 size, a Dutch A4 and uh, we are going to start with step one so wish me luck and let's start so this is the photo I've chosen for this page and this came out of a magazine uh, called Happiness and I think this picture is absolutely beautiful so I'm going to try and use this. Now I've already read through all the steps of course and I know at one point at step 7 it says extend a page. So what I'm going to do is cut this image So it really helps me to read the steps on forehand and think about what I could do with those steps and uh, what I can do to improvise. So I knew that step 7 was about extending the page so that's why I try, I decided to do it this way. So for this photo to glue down I'm going to use my Mod Podge 
and I will coat it with the Mod Podge as well. And you can see that the colors are changing. I'm not sure why that is. Because I have two printers, a laser printer and an inkjet. And um, they both uh, lose a bit of, lo well they don't lose a bit of color but it, it, um, it comes off a bit, you see? So that was step one for the photo. Already marked that. Step two, add black marker or pen. So for this I would not know where to add a black marker or a pen um, because I, I don't have anything yet really so what do I do with the black marker or a pen? So the simplest way for me to do that is just to add a bit of shadow and uh, probably will use my Faber Castell Artist Pit Pen and a water brush and um, mostly here where there is a dark line already um, I could add some more shadow and that will be um, my step two my interpretation of step two. And step three, use a map. Now, because I am thinking, um, well, I thought this little boy and his elephant could might as well come from India, I'm not sure, but they look like they are from India. I uh, thought to print out a map of India and I did it in black and white. I have a bit of more uh, contrast in this one um, because at my previous attempt I used a very colored map uh, from a, an atlas of India and that completely threw me off. I didn't know uh, what to do with those colors. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to tear So step three is done, but before I go further with step four, I am going to do something for my background um, because I want it to let it all blend in a bit more and I'm going to do that with a white acrylic paint from Art Talent, white very old bottle and I'm going to use this home deco decorative hobby paint in the color sugar so that's what I'm going to start doing I'm only thinking with what with my fingers So now it's a matter of finding and trying to create the right colors to blend this image in. Oops. So 
I'm going to use the Sugar of Home Deco and our talent, the Rosy Posy. Mix them together and hopefully oh, this is way too pink. So I think what I can do for the wild card stick, the oops, uh, make a pocket, um, I'm thinking to do something here. So I need to blend in uh, this still a bit, uh, but I don't have to do the whole part. And I am guessing that a little pink with this it's a paint acrylic paint from Van Bleischweig um, acrylic paint uh, available at Action and that is a skin tone and I adding a little drop So now I can go on with my next step and that is step four, write random words in at least three places. So I have the Posca pens I might use uh, and this is a very thin Um, hmm. oh, oops I could try different things this is a Signo Uniball a white Signo Uniball pen That's for step four. And then uh, step five says use something from a different hobby. So here you can improvise a bit because, well, if you are a reader, you could add some book text, pieces of book text paper. Or when you like uh, music, uh, when music is one of your favorite uh, other hobbies, you could use uh, torn music sheets in very many directions with this. Um, I'm going to think about what to use here because I uh, was a digital designer and that was a very very big hobby of mine so probably um, will use something I created from um, for one of my own digital kits and print it out so I'm gonna sh search for something so I went searching um, at my digital kits and I've printed something out this one uh, is a rose from my kit, the Fancy Art Roses. Um, it has a lot more 
to it than just this but that's hard to cut out so if I'm going to use this I will need to uh, add some scribbled lines and some scrap uh, splatter but I also have this which I created once for a digital kit and I think I'm going to use this so yep I'm going to add this with a Mod Podge So that's done. I'm not going to add the rows. I don't think I like that. So not going to do that for now, that is. And so we move to the next step. We had this one, use something from a different hobby, which was in my case digital scrapbooking uh, well you can go anywhere with that and step six add numbers which is pretty obvious as well so you can stencil of course you can uh, use modeling paste uh, and paint you can draw uh, le uh, numbers um, the only stencils I have with numbers are these and this is one uh, by Stampin' Back and this is one by Andy Skinner which has some numbers here and I am going to add that. I want to add a lot of numbers. I start with this and I'm using a white acrylic paint and a sponge oops I say a lot of oops do I so it says numbers so that's what I will do sure this will be visible uh, that much but that's kind of the intention Sorry about that, my camera battery died on me, so um, what I did is use these two archival inks and the stencils I showed you by Stamping Back and Andy Skinner and I used all what I could find, uh, find on numbers to stamp uh, on this page. Uh, what you can also do, because it says numbers, uh, what day is it today? Um, sorry, it's the 11th of January is 
add your date um, while creating my page I'm also adding uh, some bits and pieces to this um, extend part which is going to be added later on so I will have a kind of the same layout with this so mm, okay so now we <clears throat> come to step seven extend a page and you can also improvise with this uh, because while I am adding a piece of paper extra on the side uh, I think you can get away with uh, working in 3D so adding some texture on this or uh, some flowers or embellishments to glue down on this page then you create a 3D uh, effect which is also extending the page I think uh, because you make it a lot thicker than it usually is so just an idea um, of what you can do for extend a page um, in my case I showed you before I cut the photo a piece of the photo because this is the original and that is what I am going to add so this edge is uh, I, I tore down with the ruler uh, and I kind of like the effect so I'm going to keep it like that I do um, I'm going to take a bit off here And now I am thinking I probably need to cover this up with something. Hmm. So before I am adding this piece, I need to think about what to do with this backside. I totally forgot about this, but it needs to have something on it because this is just darn ugly. So, uh, be back in a second. Okay, what I did is just um, adding some more of the map paper I had used on this part as well and used the same colors I did on here and I had a piece of printed uh, tissue paper in my stash that said stability and I thought that could fit this page as well so that's what I have done for the back of this so that kind of looks nice when it's closed and now I am going to add this um, with this washi tape So step seven is done and then we go to step eight which says use wood shapes. Um, to improvise on this step you could for example use a scrapbook paper that has a wood texture on it maybe but I had some wood shapes in my stash so I took out these little circle circles 
uh, they were stickers at one point but they don't stick very well anymore so I'm going to uh, use this for my page and I think I will do something like this yes um, maybe I should use the golden gel medium for that this is a very fine glue uh, for heavier material That's done. Use wood shapes. And then step 9, add tea or coffee. Well, to improvise with this you can go in different directions. You can just drink your coffee while creating uh, your page. Or uh, you can actually use uh, this. But what also is an idea is to use um, an archival ink or any other ink or spray and this one is a coffee and I also have like this for example is a spray by Heidi Swap which is a tea color so you can go in different dire directions with this I'm gonna stick to the coffee, I think, and this is what I have left. I just drank most of it. I will pour it here in my cup and I will try and make some splatters or maybe do a, some uh, circle marks. But first, let me try and do this. <gasps> My gosh! Okay, nothing happened. I'm alright, I'm alright. I don't think this will work. Maybe... No, and there is someone at the door. One moment. So I am guessing this isn't working. Does it leave any marks? Hardly. And I drink my coffee black. Nope. That doesn't do much at all. I will try this. That does a bit. Well, I could leave it. I don't think this will add a lot of color. So I'm gonna leave this and dry it and see what happens then. I could um, use some coffee ground from my machine and try and do something with that but I don't feel like doing that. So I did real coffee and now I am doing um, this, the archival ink, the coffee and I'm going to try and make marks. I also have used this uh, for um, the border and I could do so for this as well Uh, the coffee, the real coffee, uh, did leave some marks on this. It did, but 
probably uh, you won't see it. Step 9 is done. Step 10, add some lace. Now, I have cut out a little piece of this. And that is what I am going to add here. Add that. And I'm thinking of adding this. I had this piece of doily left. Of adding that here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure. Does this look silly? That's my lace. So step 10 is also done. So now I'm um, at the wild, wild card stick, make a pocket and oh, during the process of this page I've been thinking about that and I have made a little pocket from scrapbook paper which I'm going to add here. But I want to stitch that, so I'm going to take out my uh, sewing machine and stitch that onto my page. So, be back in a moment. So, my pocket is attached with a black thread. I use my sewing machine and, well, uh, what to use it for? I simply got out, cut out all the steps of the pick a stick challenge, and I'm going to stick them all together. And my page for the Pick a Stick Challenge is done. I am quite happy with this, I have to say. I had a, an idea in mind. I absolutely wanted to use this photo because I thought it was beautiful. Um, well, I'm quite happy with how this page turned out. So remember to check the description box below because I will leave you a link to the Facebook group of the Pick a Stick Challenges and uh, if you like you can join in. Um, that's it for me. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps for people to find my channel and hope to see you again very soon. Bye-bye!